Hello, my fellow cigarers. Today, I'm in Kansas City, Missouri, in front of the National World War I Memorial. So this is a town known for its great hospitality, its great sports teams, and of course, its great barbecue. It's also known for having some great cigar shops, and today, I'm gonna take you to one. So hurry up, grab your favorite cigar, your lighter and cutter, and let's get going. Welcome to Cigarers, the YouTube channel dedicated to passionate cigar smokers, their interesting and diverse stories, and their favorite, sometimes unique places to smoke. I'm your host, Dan Zender, and today we're at the Old Westport District of Kansas City, Missouri at Fidel's Cigar Shop. Now, I was at Fidel's last night for a smoke, and I was highly impressed with the hospitality of the staff and all the people that I met there, so I thought I'd share it with you today. So come on in, let's take a look around. Fidel's is one of those special types of cigar shops that you find in historic districts spread throughout the Midwest. These places are some of my favorites. They allow patrons to relax and have a smoke in a setting that just can't be replicated in more modern locations. Even though Fidel's is in the bustling Westport Entertainment District, once you walk through the doors, it seems like you've stepped into another era. The cigar cabinets line century old walls, hanging from the ceiling are chandeliers that could easily be as old. The cozy lounge has comfortable seating, a big screen TV, cigar lockers, and a small bar where, as a bonus, you can bring your own bottle. Let there be no doubt, the Kansas City Chiefs rule in Fidel's. It was in the lounge where I met this episode's spotlight cigarer, Daniel, who you'll meet in a bit, and where I took a few minutes after closing to speak with Nick Woods, the manager of Fidel's. So I'm here with Nick, the uh, manager of uh, Fidel Cigars. Nick? Nice to have you with us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. So tell me a little bit about the history of the shop. Uh, we opened in uh, 1998, four uh, gentlemen got together. Um, two of them were brothers and the other two guys, uh, kind of the powerhouse behind it. And they decided to open up a cigar shop down here in the heart of Westport. And, um, and yeah, so we've been here uh, since then. It was, it was interesting, so there's a cigar shop down in the plaza that had already been doing lots of business. So like, you know, they've been there for like the past 50 years. So it was definitely a challenge to open up a cigar shop in Westport, yeah. but, uh, but they went for it and we ended up developing our own clientele of very loyal customers and our own kind of community here, which has been really nice. So Westport's like a kind of an entertainment for those that are watching that aren't from Kansas City or haven't visited. Yeah, it's kind of an enter entertainment area. Westport is the first mercantile district of Kansas City. So it was the first place where there were stores where you could actually purchase things. And it ended up becoming not just a place where you could purchase things, but, but, but a place of entertainment as well. So a lot of these buildings down here are really old. Yeah. The building that we are in right now is from 1857. I believe it is the seventh oldest building in Kansas City. Wow. So tell me about the, the customers. Uh, what, what are your, what's your average customers like? I mean, I, I see you have some lockers over here. So I'm, I'm assuming you have some regulars that come in all the we time. We do. We do. Um, it's really a variety. I would say that that's what's been so kind of, it's been so interesting about um, working here. I've been working here for five years and I think I've been running it for two. I, it's hard to keep track. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but I found that there was such a variety of people that smoke cigars um, from all, you know, walks of life and professions and uh, you have all different kinds of like cultures and backgrounds, all that kind of stuff and kind of a unifying nature to cigars, which, is different than some other kinds of entertainment spots down here that are geared towards one particular type of clientele and they have their game and they know what they're doing and they do it well. Whereas cigars uh, tends to bring people together from all walks of life. And so, um, but I will say that, you know, that we try to create an environment that is for people to relax, you know. Um, it's, we're definitely in an entertainment district, but this isn't some loud bump and party spot. This is a place right. to relax and enjoy your cigar, have a few drinks with your friends. And, uh, and we have a very loyal customer base, people that, that appeals to them. Well, so you've hit on a, a key theme of, of, of the show, which is the unifying uh, effect of cigars and the people that come in, you know, the, mm -hmm. the different cultures and races, creeds, religions, Absolutely. sexes, everybody comes in and they're mm -hmm. brought together by, um, you know, by the, the passion for their cigars. Okay. And that's, that's really the thing that, uh, um, you know, when I was in here last night and I came by and you were here and I had a cigar and I was very, um, very impressed with the hospitality, which is, you know, <laughs> it's just one of the things that is, you know, as a, as a true cigar, -er, um, yeah. you know, I like to see when I, when I go to, um, 
you know, cigar shops around the country. Absolutely. Um, I mean, we, we, we did chat a little bit and I think we used up most of our good material last night. We were chatting, <laughs> getting to know one another. Uh, but you know, when you're in the zone and you're vibing with somebody yeah. like we were last night, those kinds of conversations, they just kind of yeah. happen. And I think that I use the phrase, uh, that, uh, the tobacco shop is the last demilitarized zone of, uh, race, politics, religion, um, those those issues don't seem to be as divisive, uh, at least not in our shop. And I think uh, the reason for that is, is because people's priority when they come in here, their value is to relax and enjoy themselves. And they make an extra effort to not allow those things to disrupt them because they want to be able to enjoy yeah. themselves and relax. And that priority, that high value of wanting to enjoy your time and being ten- intentional about enjoying your time, overriding something else that maybe might I'd be a hot button in, in every other scenario, I think says something really special about tobacco. Yeah, so for, for the viewers, uh, uh, last night was November 4th, the night after election 2020. And I can tell you when we were in here, there wasn't a TV set to uh, the election. Everybody was in here. Nobody was focused on, you know, all the drama of, of politics of the day. So it was truly a pleasant, calming environment, which is kind of where you <laughs> want glad, to go. You know, I, you come to have a cigar and, and relax. And that's uh, that's the thing that I, I think uh, takes a second to, you have that cigar, you calm down, you have that interchange, that, you know, those interesting I, discussions with po- I, folks. I think it shows that certain things have the capability to override those things that we yeah. see, that seem to be so insurmountable in other scenarios. Yeah. And uh, I think most cigar smokers would, uh, at least in my experience, would agree that 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 they value that so much and they enjoy it so much and such a unifying activity um, that it it, 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 it just brings so much positive energy in that, yeah. in that regard that it overrides those kinds of issues. So, yeah. I, Nick, I got to thank you for you know, letting me uh, come in here and, and uh, talk to some of your folks here, the, your clientele. Uh, I'm going to steal the demilitarized zone thing. I love uh, it. The DMZ is. The I DMZ. Love it. I love it. I, I, it, I love was, it. Uh, that's it feels a great that one. way. It feels that way. It feels like a safe space. It feels like a place that everybody can yeah. just enjoy themselves. Well, I, I appreciate it. And so for any of the viewers out there, if you ever get to Kansas City and you get a chance to come down to the Westport District, I highly recommend that you stop in at uh, Fidel's. I'm going to put a link to their website and their Facebook in the details below. And... If you've been here and you're watching this episode, please uh, please put some comments down in the comment section about your experience at Fidel's. Um, enjoyed this shop. It was a great experience. And I highly recommend it next time you're in Kansas City to get your butt on down here and have a, a smoke with the fine folks at Fidel's. Thanks again, Nick. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Philip. One of the tobacconists at the shop has introduced me to a true cigar. Let's meet him. Hi, so I'm at Fidel's and I'm with Daniel. Daniel's one of the regulars here. Uh, Daniel, tell me about yourself. Uh, hi, I'm Daniel. Uh, I've been coming to Fidel's for about seven years now. Um, I got my start in the tobacco world here at Fidel's. I used to work here a little while ago. Um, fun fact, I was the youngest locker member uh, here at Fidel's for a while. Still have my locker now. Um, But uh, a little bit about me. I am an executive pastor um, of a church, so I handle the day-to-day functions of um, operations and community involvement and um, as far as making the ministry run smoothly. How long have you been smoking cigars? Uh, I had my first cigar at uh, 17. I'm from Jackson, uh, Mississippi. Um, So that's around... You don't have to give your your age away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About about eight years ago. Yeah, Yeah, I'm pretty young, pretty young. Pretty young. And do you remember what that first cigar was? Uh, My first cigar was a punch signature, actually. Uh, Funny thing, I say my first um, real cigar was a punch signature. Before that, um, they had uh, five packs for... $11 $11 at Walgreens of a brand called um, the Golden Band, and I had it in Muskogee, Oklahoma. Yeah, <laughs> I was an Okie from Muskogee for a while. <laughs> so um, why do you come to Fidel's, besides the fact you used to work here? Uh, so I come to Fidel's, um, one, because uh, it's in a part of the city, Westport, 
uh, you have bars and restaurants and things like that. Um, but really, um, I was the youngest cigar smoker that I knew. And it was a lot of older guys that used to come for Dale's and they kind of put me under their wings and taught me all about cigars uh, and about scotches and um, rum, whiskey, gin, uh, removed mezcal. It was it was just all together. Um, but they kind of adopted me as their little brother. Um, I was the only male in my family, so it was, it was cool having other male figures around um, and introducing me to cigars and teaching me things. I was one of the people that thought I knew it all already and I didn't know anything about cigars. So, so I, I don't know. Uh... You probably don't know what a cigar is, but let me mm -hmm. define it to you. A cigar is somebody that's passionate about cigars, the cigar lifestyle, and the experience in meeting folks where they share, um, you know, their passion for cigars. Would you consider yourself a cigar? Most definitely. Okay, good. <laughs> that helps. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let me ask you a question. Where is the most unusual place that you smoke a cigar? That's a trick uh, question. Huh? Probably my bathtub. <laughs> you were mentioned earlier that yeah. you have no problem smoking in your oh, car. Oh, yeah. Uh, smoking in the living room, um, bathtub. Yeah. Uh, and it was a bubble bath, too. So. <laughs> but are, you, yeah. are you married? I am. I am. Yeah. Recently your, got married. What's your wife think about you smoking inside the house? Okay. Crazy thing is, um, I introduced my wife into smoking cigars because she thought I was going to a lounge and it was like undercover for something else. And she's like, you can't be there for like six hours just watching TV and sports and smoking cigars. So then I started bringing her and got her into cigars. Uh, and her cigar budget is a lot bigger than mine. Um, but uh, she doesn't mind too bad, uh, especially if she's enjoying a cigar, too. Um, but yeah, and, and the, the guys here love my wife. I mean, when I go out of town, they say, do we need to get any bottles of wine for when she stops in for a cigar? They, they love her dearly. That's great. That's great. Make it a family. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, who is the most famous or semi-famous person you may have smoked a cigar with? Um, it was in uh, Chicago at yeah. Biggs Mansion. Uh, I was in the same room having a cigar with Steve Hart. I've been to there, as a matter of yes. fact. I, I, I was a part of his uh, Disney Dreamers Academy, so I had on my alumni ring, and we had a little chit-chat, and it, it was amazing. Okay, are you up for a challenge? Yes. Okay. So this is what I call the speed round. Okay. I want you to name as many famous cigar smokers in history that you can think of in 30 seconds. Ready? Okay. Gotcha. Go. Winston Churchill, uh, Clintons, uh, Steve Harvey, Michael Jordan. Um, ooh, wow. That just caught me off guard. Uh, can it be cigar creators like blenders? Okay. Uh, Lito Gomez, uh uh, Papa Padron, uh, Arturo Fuente, uh, Carlito Fuente. Um, oh, that's getting... It's a tough one, isn't it? Your time's uh, almost up. Man, uh, I love uh, Steve Saka, um, uh, Skip Martin. Um, oh, man. I should know more of these. It's a tough one. Don't worry. You're not the... I, I'm, I'm going to ask this question a lot, and I, I, I'm sure I'm going to challenge oh, everybody. Oh, man. Let me ask you this. Okay. Um, if you could smoke a cigar right now with any three other cigar smokers, living or dead, right now, who would they be? Um, Lito Gomez. Um, if he smokes cigars, Barack Obama. And if he smokes cigars, uh, Colin Powell. And if they didn't, you would probably introduce them to cigars. Yeah, I would still have one in conversation yeah. with them. <laughs> Last question. Name five movie or TV personalities that you can think of known for smoking cigars. Uh, Godfather. Um, uh, oh, I was just watching a TV show the other day. Um, I'll be back. Oh, yeah. Swanson. <laughs> um, oh, Seinfeld. Uh, the guy on there. He, he, they had the episode where he was smoking cigars. I can't think of his name. It's a tough one, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> These, those are the good questions. Those well, challenge questions. Daniel, thank you so much for taking a few minutes no with problem. us uh, here on Cigars. Um, just so you know, you are actually going to be the first cigar <laughs> that I've interviewed. And I, on this I am new honored. channel. I am honored. It's, I am been, honored. it's been wonderful talking to you. Thanks for gotcha. taking a few minutes. I no appreciate problem. it. No problem. Thanks for watching this episode of Cigars. I had a great time filming it here at Fidel's in Kansas City, Missouri. If you like this episode, 
hit that like button, consider subscribing to the channel, and if you want to get notified of future episodes, hit the bell icon. As I always say, take some time out of your busy day to relax. Go down to your local cigar shop, grab your favorite cigar, sit down, light up, talk to your fellow cigars, and remember, always support your local tobacconist. We'll see you next time. Watch the next video to meet more cigarers. To learn more about the cigarers concept and why I started this show, I encourage you to watch episode one. And hey, don't forget to subscribe.